So I had the, the, the privilege, if you will, of doing three movies with the late John Alcott. And uh, he was a very interesting man. Um, he had a light meter, but more than that, he had a black and white Polaroid camera. And every time there was a setup, uh, he really looked like this when he was working. And I don't know why, but he did. So he'd put the Polaroid camera up and he'd snap a picture and then he'd look at it and then he would check the contrast and then he would tell the stop that w the assistant cameraman would set the camera at and then, and then we would go and roll. He made a decision for Vice Squad that uh, we would not use a generator or light. Now this is a night shoot. Vice Squad, we were, we, the whole thing's night. We shot the whole movie at night. And the way he accomplished this is number one, water truck. The water truck comes before every shot and, uh, and just sprays the whole street down with water. The street lights going onto the wet streets, that picks up one to two full stops. The second thing he did was he chose Fuji ASA 500, a very fast stock. And the third thing he did was push two full stops on force developing the film. And through that, all we really did was rent four sun guns and the battery packs. And the sun guns were properly art directed around so that on a shot, people would be walking into silhouette, and then when you needed to see them speak, they would walk right into their light, and then it would be on their face, and then continuing. So knowing this, on the second movie I did with him, Triumphs of a Man Called Horse, when we were down in Mexico, I, I, I'm thinking, this is, this is great, I'm going to solidify my relationship with John, and things are going to go on. Well, Derek Gibson was our producer, and he needed to get this show made because he was at a point where Sandy didn't have, our boss Sandy Howard, hadn't had a production. He had a bit of a dry spell. Derek had run up a lot of credit card debt, first wife, first child, lots of financial issues. Derek was the only one that knew that Sandy raised about this much money and the budget was about this big. When we got down to Mexico, I never knew the budget was about this big, but I'm Captain Budget, and Derek knows that. So Derek tells me that this is our budget. So I put together a business plan so that we're on budget. And Derek's very happy until Mr. John Huff, who had just done Biggles, comes down to direct our movie. He knows that the budget is this big because Sandy told him. Now he finds out from Derek the budget is this big. Derek had a bleeding ulcer that fast. I literally watched blood coming out of his mouth and his ears. I literally picked the man up, literally brought him downstairs, literally took a taxi and brought him to the what's called American Hospital. And day and date when we were in Mexico, it was important that you went to the American Hospital if you wanted the best medical treatment for our, this kind of thing. I'm looking through the windows of the operating room that I can see through. A drill that's like a hand drill is going into his stomach and tubes are going into it to save his life. Nobody's happy about the truth of this budget. So by the time we make our move from Cuernavaca to Durango to shoot the last sequences, I get the phone call the night before. I'm not the advanced guy. I'm the, I'm the, the guy who's actually line producing. Derek's doing the advance on Durango. He tells me at 9 o'clock at night, that I haven't made arrangements for lunch for tomorrow. This is Durango. This is 1982. I, 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 there's no internet. There, there's no, so I call the hotel caterer, which is all I can think to do. And we're in the biggest hotel there. It's not like you call the other big hotel. This is Durango. So I call the, the hotel caterer, uh, and I'm waking him up at home. I'm, I'm letting the, the people who are at the hotel. This is an emergency. that. Is the best we can do on this kind of short notice is throw together picnic baskets. We can get you the ham sandwiches and the potato salad, and you know, and the, then it's going to have to work. Now, I know from working with John Alcott that when you go into his camera truck at lunchtime, there is literally, and I am not exaggerating, white linen covering camera boxes silverware, plates, the camera assistants bring the food, it goes on the plate, and he eats a proper lunch. He's the greatest man you'll ever meet, 
professional. I mean, designed the camera system for 2001, won the Academy Award for Barry Lyndon, an even keel temperament, always good suggestions and good ideas. But on that day, he came over to me and he says, Derek Gibson said that you catered us ham sandwiches for lunch. I'll be in the camera truck until I get a proper meal. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> I, I, at this point, the, the hotel was up and running. We were down for almost three hours before we could get pasta brought out. And we lost about a quarter of a day on that. So to make uh, everything as worse as possible, that night the stunt crew comes in and says, uh, we want double salaries. We're not SAG down here. We're non-union. We got you over a barrel. Ha, 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 ha. Mm -hmm. what, what's going to happen if I don't give you a double salary? Well, we're going to get on the plane right now and go home. Well, I said, I'm sorry to hear that because you were about to get your per diems this afternoon. <laughs> they left. The next day, I was thug number two at the water hole in full outfit and, and using everything I had learned from Chuck Norris's brother, Aaron Norris, on how to do a movie punch. And, and there I was, training the assistant cameraman on how to take a, a movie punch. And, and he got in, and the cameraman, we dressed him up. So Doug O'Neans is a thug at the water hole. And the assistant cameraman, by the way, Julio Macott, uh, Home Alone, uh, <laughs> big movies. And so he was a thug at the water hole. We, we had a grand time doing the rest of the stunts on the movie for free. So actually, instead of going twice over budget, I saved the stunt for the rest of the movie, including their per diems, because they knew that they had us over a barrel. And by the way, they're all good people. They just took a really bad negotiating position.